Welcome to a video I am making. I have just spent, I don't know, a couple hours building this castle thing over here, and I just wanted to run people through it because I'm excited for it. Um, mostly from a standpoint of converting it to a role-playing game to run players through it, but, uh, all I've really got for right now is maybe it's some evil orc fortress. The two guys out front here, they are two blocks tall, which denotes that they are kind of bruisers. They're, they have slight, they have more HP than that little one block dude there. And the black color means that they are warriors or tanks. So they will absorb lots of damage. And when you pull this, both of them will come. Now, this next pull, like, immediately inside, will be these three guys over here and these two over here. Now you see the two tanks over here. And the cyan is the healer block. And over here, the brown is the archer block. The purple is the control magic block, so they'll, like, crowd control the players uh, in return for uh, not doing as much or any damage compared to this guy. The red is the damage magic caster. And this first pull will t bring all six of them on you. Doesn't matter which side you pull from. Uh, they will line of sight if you go like right here though. So this first pull is designed to be like mechanics, bam, in your face. To teach you what each of them monsters does and um, how to deal with them. Now in here is a boss. That's the boss, or it's more of a mini boss compared to this whole structure of it, but all but this boss are optional. Now this little dude here you'll see more of when we climb the towers. Um, he's kind of like the spawn of this big dude. I'm not sure what they are, but I just call them orc beasts, I guess. They're big and they're bad news. Bad news bears. This one is double-headed and much bigger than its little dude. So, similar mechanics... You notice that they're both made out of black. That means that they are tanky as all get out. And the two heads here will simultaneously be firing off uh, different abilities. And if you kill them, you get a button here, but it will be represented as a key. Now... Should you choose to just go straight up, that is actually the, like I said, the only required boss. Come over here and get a view. Um, you would just go up here. It's another one of the guys at the entrance, but this time he's backed up by a healer and a uh, crowd controller. And you have a very tight space. Um, and if you're not careful, you can also pull this uh, bigger, tougher healer right here, who is really meant to heal himself through the party's damage and act as a, can you hit this guy hard enough to kill him? Which will let you know whether or not you can progress to the boss. Um, but you would just come up here, use the key and or button, 
open the door, and here is the last boss, but we will come back to him. Um, I'd like to climb the tower. Now the cave, okay, that's... That's the west. I guess this would be the southern tower. And the first pole that will aggro onto you um, when you walk through here is a healer, two damage casters, and two tanks. And you will probably have to CC something in the room. Crowd control something in the room. Um... You will most likely have to use crowd control on the majority of pulls in here. I think even over in here, which has one of the big tanks. Yeah, see even that, you'd have to crowd control someone. Then moving up, we have a more varied group set up here. The two double tanks. I'm really fond of the double tanks. The healer, damage caster and uh, crowd controller. Then when we get up here, this is a very squashed space and this guy does not like that. He is ready to just tear people up. And he, since this is such a confined space to fight him in, it will be quite the challenge since I'm I'm planning on having Whatever this represents have a lot of um, AOE moves where you need to to reduce their impact. You need to successfully move out of their way. And then we get up to the boss for the tower, the mini boss. Uh, the this white stuff are his wings, and as you can see, he is a healing based one. But he's got two tank pieces on him right there. So what he will most likely do is he'll have a lot of ways to heal himself. And it will be more of an attrition fight. Which will hopefully result in the players winning. But since... These towers are very confined spaces to fight in, even compared to some of the other boss areas. So, I'm going to have the stuff in the towers be a lot about um, finding that one square block that's not got AoEs on it or something like that. I also figured since they're flying, I would use that to my advantage and have an air phase for each flying boss. Um, probably calling down lightning strikes or something like that. Now we are going to go visit the northern tower. And as we saw earlier, um, bigger tank, smaller tank, controller, archer, and healer. I didn't make any double healer fights in this poll, or in this, ta in this, uh, so I probably could have. This is again the varied one of each class setup. I did not go for two tanks this time though, because this is a very small and cramped space. Fighting five of these guys on this floor is already too much. Another one of the beasts. A little more room on here. So he will probably be performing lunges or something like that, since he has a little more room to maneuver. And then, as you see here, two tank squares, two damage caster squares. This guy is going to be DPS race. So I hope you brought a very DPS intensive group that can also CC, which... To be fair, there are a lot of things in both things I want, both systems I would like to convert this dungeon to. Uh, they both have 
characters that can pump out damage and uh, control the battlefield very well. So, let's just fly over here. Okay. And take a look at this boss. The first pull in here is two damage casters, two control casters. Um, I was hoping that the the raw damage combined with the control would help give a little bit of a you know change up to whatever party is coming through here. But it's also a sneak peek as to this boss, which is some kind of Arcanist or Warlock of some sort, as you see with his little flippy book and his obviously magical looking things here. And this boss will be probably one of the only ones that require you to stand by something besides the um, end boss where you will probably have to have someone either sacrifice themselves and stand in whatever beam is going up and take and absorb a little bit of damage to um, keep that damage from hitting the whole party which I am a big fan of mechanics. So, yep. Luckily, though, he won't be too hard because he is a very squishy guy. Okay. Now, this fight has one pure mini-boss of each kind. Um... Tank, Archer, and uh, Controller. But only two of them will be up at once. So it will be up to the party to balance um, what's going on. Or how they react to what's going on. Um, most likely it will be like... The warrior and then one of the other two will be up at first. And then every couple rounds, um, they'll have a shared health pool. And every couple rounds, um, or, af or at certain percentages of the health pool, one of them will turn off and another one will turn on. And then the, this, like, say it was the warrior and the archer. At the trigger time, Archer will turn off, this guy will turn on, and then at the trigger time, this guy will turn off, and the Archer will turn back on. And so that way you're always... It will get... You will always know what's coming, which will be the good thing, as long as you're keeping track. But uh, I hope the Switch will be fairly rapid um, but have enough time for the bosses to actually for the bosses to actually get some of their mechanics out there we go have problems okay so for this boss as you look warrior archer and damage caster, as well as flying. And he will require either it will either require someone to stand in there, or he will lock someone in here and uh, continually pelt them with uh, fire, or yeah, probably fire or lightning strikes from the sky. Um, and it will be the rest of the party's uh, job to try and push him to the point where he throws another person in here. And the whole time, hopefully, you will have a healer, and that healer will be trying to keep up 
with the boss hitting someone else and the person in the middle here uh, going down. And then afterwards you get fat loots and experience and all the fun things you like in RPGs. But this was just my dungeon. Spent a few hours making it. A little raid zone, as it were. I thought some aesthetic choices on it were pretty cool. Uh, aside from doing all of the walls and the aztec -y stone. So thank you for watching. Let me know uh, if you liked it. Because I... We'd like to make more dungeony things. I wish Minecraft was a lot cooler of a game so that I could, you know, actually do cool dungeons like this with, uh, within Minecraft. So, thanks for watching, and let me know what you thought, and please like or subscribe or whatever that jazz is.